Hi, I'm David and I wrote your book. Now I'm going to read it just for you. Ready? The Little Girl Who Lost Her Name. One morning, a little girl awoke, sat up and rubbed her eyes, looked over at her bedroom door and got a nasty surprise. Her name, which she had stuck there, shock horror, it was gone. What was her name? Was it Jane or Sam or Rebecca or Yvonne? She looked inside her wardrobe. She peered in all her drawers. She searched underneath her bed, crouched down on all fours. No luck. Her name had vanished. She couldn't find it anywhere. So she put on some clothes, brushed her teeth, and even combed her hair, and set off to find her name. Never mind the dangers, for it's true that this little girl was ever so courageous. She crept out into the dawn and discovered a winding trail. Would she find her name? Let's find out. On with our tale. The little girl came to a clearing and saw a shiny knight, practising with his sword and pretending to have a fight. Hello, the girl said timidly. I'm sorry to bother you. But you haven't seen a name by chance, mine's well. I wish I knew. One would love to help, the knight said, but afraid that one can't rest. You see, one is setting out on a frightfully important quest. Sounds exciting, the little girl said in awe. On a quest for what? The knight looked quite surprised at that and thought and frowned a lot. No idea, the knight said at last. Nope, sorry, one hasn't a clue. Something about dragons or a princess? Do you know, I wish I knew. The knight sat down on a nearby rock, looking remarkably cheerful, then noticed a little girl who had become distinctly tearful. Oh yes, your name, I quite forgot. You're also on a quest. Here, take this K from my shield. It's my very gallant crest. Along a river, the girl spied a beast, looking rather grumpy, huge and brown with enormous teeth and very, very grubby. What's wrong? asked the girl. Wrong? she cried. However will I stay clean? This riverbank, the state of it, is the muddiest I've ever seen. I'm a hippo and mud's our thing. We're always covered and smeared. But I hate dirt, it's horrid and the others all call me weird. I've lost my name, the little girl said, so I'm called nothing at all. But I think that I can help you. Have you seen that waterfall? For getting clean, it's just a job. You see, it's like nature's shower. So the hippo jumped right in and soon was smelling like a flower. Clean, I'm clean, she sang to herself, covered in soapy bubbles. But oh, what about you? I'd love to help you with your troubles. Here's an H for hippo. I found it hidden under all that muck. You never know, it might help. I wish you the very best of luck. On and on the little girl walked, here, there and round about, till she came across an animal with a curiously long snout. Hello, the little girl said politely. What kind of animal are you? I'm an aardvark, said the beast. Pleased to meet you. How do you do? Not good, the girl said dolefully. I'm hungry and I've lost my name. Oh, goodness, cried the aardvark. Bless my soul. What a dreadful shame. The aardvark was rooting busily, nose down among the plants. He said, would you care to join me for a tasty plate of ants? Ants, said the little girl, pulling a face. Oh no, really, not for me. And she sat down looking so gloomy that the aardvark took pity. Lost your name, he snuffled gently. Well now, that won't do. But there's no need for you to give up and sit there feeling blue. Aardvark starts with two A's, so I can surely spare you one. I'm sure you'll come across your name before the day is done. Over some rocks, the little girl climbed and got an awful scare. She'd nearly wandered down into a deep, dark lion's lair. Too late! The lion spied her and cried out with a roar, Who are you and what do you think you are doing at my door? I don't know, the girl said, turning to run. You see, I've lost my name. Oh, don't go, the lion said, honestly. I'm really rather tame. See, I'm in charge around here, the boss. I suppose I'm like the king, which is great and stuff, I guess. But see now, here's the thing. I can order all the animals to do anything I say, but they're all much, much too scared to ever come and play. I'll play with you, the girl said. Oh no, please, don't be glum. And play they did all morning, for I never had such fun. My friend, accept this medal, the lion said after their game. It's engraved with an L. Keep it. 
and I hope you find your name. The weather had just turned chilly, which wasn't very nice, when the girl spied a man fishing through a hole cut in the ice. <sighs> no fish, the man sighed sadly. I'm at the very end of my tether, and I'm absolutely freezing. Oh, curse this dreadful weather. I belong to the Inuit, he said. We're supposed to love the snow. But do I look like I'm enjoying myself? The answer's a big N-O. I just want to chill out on the beach and get a smashing tan. Well, I just want to find my name, said the girl. That is, if I can. And they both stared into the icy hole, and they both shed a tear. Then the girl said, I've heard Greece is nice this time of the year. Greece, you say, Inuit man cried. Then I'm on the next plane out. But oh, you've still not found your name. I'd love to help you out. Take this icicle shaped like an eye for Inuit, you see. I'm off to white sand beaches and barbecued prawns for tea. The little girl turned around and skipped back the way she'd come, past all the wonderful sights she'd seen and all the things she'd done. The letters she'd been given, can you guess what they spelled out? That's right, the name she thought she'd lost. She'd found it again, no doubt. Yippee! The girl cried happily. Hooray! Never say never. Oh, that was the best adventure any girl has had ever. Up the winding trail she walked and crept back to her house, into her bed and under the covers, as quiet as a mouse. She felt so tired and weary, her head one happy whirl. What a quite amazingly brave and courageous little girl, called Callie. Callie.